Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, this very special event. My name is Jeremy Crosby. I'm the manager at Fitchburg Access Community Television, and I'm so honored here to be with this great group today. Uh, you are uh, joining in on the adult falls and community efforts to reduce injury and risk. And we have a uh, just a wonderful panel and uh, uh, definitely a great topic uh, to, to discuss today. I uh, want to set a few ground rules here as far as how this is going to work uh, before we get into this. Uh, we'll, we will uh, be uh, uh, taking questions today. Uh, you can email those in uh, and I'll uh, try to get those in at the end uh, if you uh, and, and then try to save some time at the end uh, if, uh, if we can uh, to answer some of those questions. Uh, other than that, uh, we, we've got a lot of great ta uh, topics uh, planned for us today. So we'll be talking a little bit about the data uh, related to falls right here in Dane County. Uh, lucky to have safe communities in the Dane County uh, Falls Prevention Task Force. We'll hear from them uh, some research and evaluation uh, on falls. Um, uh, goes hand in hand here uh, with discussion, community classes, efforts. There's a lot of great classes uh, here uh, in Dane County and excited to, uh, to talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then the interface between EMS uh, healthcare and community-based programs, all part of this group discussion today, uh, which is again, very exciting. And uh, I know they're all excited to get uh, going here. Uh, as far as uh, who do we have here on the, the call today, uh, we're gonna jump right into it. And I'm gonna go first here uh, to Susan E. Fricken. Uh, Susan, uh, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us uh, what organization you're part of and some of the stuff you do. Hi, I am a physical therapist. I have, uh, I am in private practice. Uh, the name of my practice is Yahara Therapy. Um, one of the areas I specialize in is falls prevention. I um, also happen to be a member of the Falls Task Force of Safe Communities and do uh, teach stepping on classes as well as do some work um, that I'll be talking about later. Uh, excited to have you here. Welcome. Uh, next one uh, is Ashley Hillman. Welcome. Hi, thanks, Jeremy. Um, my name is Ashley Hillman, and I'm the Falls Prevention Program Manager at Safe Communities. And I have the privilege of working with all of the people on the call today. So probably the most fun job of all. Um, and trying to figure out how can we reduce the rate of falls among our community's older adults. So thanks for having me. Fantastic. You look like you're in a really great spot, too, to be calm for uh, for listening in today on this uh, Zen here a moment. Uh, turning our attention now uh, to Mary Loby. Mary, uh, welcome. Thank you, Jeremy. Happy to be here with all of my falls prevention friends in Dane County. I am the Adult Injury Prevention Coordinator with UW Health Adult Level 1 Trauma Center. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, welcome, Mary. Uh, Paul Maras. Uh, Paul, uh, welcome uh, to the show. Thank you, Jeremy. So I am Paul Maras. I am CEO of Happy Wellness, and I do research with UW-Madison looking at fall prevention and uh, how yoga can help, especially in rural communities. Fantastic. Welcome, Paul. Uh, Jean O'Leary. Uh, Jean, uh, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. My name is Gina O'Leary, and I work for Madison School and Community Recreation. I'm the 50-plus fitness specialist, and I coordinate all types of uh, group fitness classes for different community-based efforts in Madison, and I work with all of these wonderful people also. Happy Fantastic. to be here. Well, welcome, uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, we are working on uh, Miss Charlie Daniels as well. Uh, she's supposed to be joining us, having a little technical difficulty, but she uh, will hopefully be here uh, real soon. So we'll welcome her uh, when she's able to uh, join us. So let's jump right into this. Uh, Mary, you're going to tell us uh, a little bit about the data, uh, which uh, definitely supports uh, uh, why this organization, uh, all of you, are, are so important here when it comes to fall prevention. Yes, I am. Um, if I can figure out how to get my, there we go. You know, I always think I'm ready and then I'm not. So, um, again, very just, uh, thrilled to be here with everyone today. I am looking for the right place to start. Here we go. So adult falls and community efforts to reduce injury and risk. Um, so 
as everyone here knows, and I think most people are increasingly aware of um, the fact that falls is a, an enormous risk, particularly for um, older adults, but really it's true f- um, across the age span. Um, falls is among the highest um, injury group across, as I said, um, the entire age group, age span. But for people who are 65 and older, it's particularly dangerous. And uh, what's become very clear in about the past five years is there's been an enormous increase um, in the rate of not only injuries and and usually very severe, it can be very severe injuries, um, but also death rates from falls. Wisconsin, unfortunately, has and continues to have this um, this place in this data of, interestingly, uh, we have a fairly low rate of um, falls re- reported by Wisconsin, oops, but we have the highest rate of deaths from falls in the country. That's true in Dane County and it's true throughout the rest of the state. Um, There are lots of theories about why that's true. Um, Some of them have to do with um, thinking about alcohol and uh, winter, but there are lots of states that have serious winter weather and ice, and they don't fall into this high death rate um, from falls. Our uh, level one trauma center, as you can see here, We serve close to 3,500 adults every year, and the majority of those patients are at the level one trauma center um, due to falls and um, far outweighing all other injuries combined, which is a a pretty significant number of people, as you can see. This is looking at um, the rate of falls and other high level mechanisms of injury across three years, 2018, 2019, and 2020. And so they have been increasing, but they've also been increasing in terms of the proportion of all injuries that are represented by falls. So motor vehicles always coming in second. Um, Firearms took place in, made a, Uh, found a place on this list uh, in 2020 for the first time. So we look by falls uh, by age group and sex. This is pretty consistent with um, other numbers we see from EMS um, and across the country. So it's not true that only older people fall and there are lots of reasons people fall. Most falls happen in the home. Um, There are occupational falls that are uh, very dangerous for um, people who work in construction sites and other places where people fall and and have serious injury. But this group right in here, the 65 to 94 age group, has the the largest number of falls. And um, what's a little unusual in 2020 is this column here, the 65 to 74 age group. Well, and the next really, where um, women commonly are in a um, higher um, age group of falls risk, but in this one, oops, I keep doing that, I'm sorry. In this one age category of uh, 65 to 74, um, men have more falls in that age group this year, this or in the last year. So that's, it's a little bit of an, outlier um, compared to other years. Our uh, work at UW Health in terms of the um, injury prevention program really focuses on our partnerships with the task forces and the committees. And here's um, our group, half of them really uh, statewide organizations, but uh, certainly our partnership with Safe Communities, Madison, Dane County, who bring all of us on this screen together and uh, many other people really is um, the place that I rely on to get um, really movement in in prevention work in ending falls risk and preventing falls deaths. Nationally, 
of the, the program that is considered the gold standard for healthcare screening is called STEADY. It means Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. And it's a very clear process of screening, assessing, and intervening. And that intervention um, is often a referral of some sort, either to um, an, an in healthcare related um, service like um, physical therapy, Susan, Susan's kind of people, um, occupational therapy, it may be uh, cardiology um, and other specialty clinics or to community um, services and resources. Again, the group of people who are assembled here. Um, the screening tools and approaches look at the history of falling, look at this um, balance and strength, which you're gonna hear more about today, critically important. Um, medications, home hazards, and, um, and certainly eyeglasses and footwear, but also com comorbidities that may have to do with, um, again, cardiology, movement disorder, and um, other concerns. So that's it for me. I'm going to stop sharing this screen and hand it back to you. Uh, great information uh, uh, there. And uh, yeah, some startling numbers there, uh, certainly in 2020 uh, on uh, male versus female falls. Um, Safe Communities uh, in the Dane County uh, Falls Prevention Task Force uh, has done some amazing things, great programs, and uh, I'm so excited, Ashley, uh, that you can tell us a little bit about uh, Safe Communities uh, and, and the task force and what's going on there uh, in the prevention world. Sure. So um, Safe Communities, just to paint a, a broad picture, Safe Communities is a, a nonprofit coalition and uh, we build coalitions around the top causes of injury death in Dane County. So one of those top causes of injury death is falls among older adults. The other three are uh, traffic, safety, suicide, and drug overdose. So the piece that I'll be talking about is obviously falls among older adults. And because we build co a coalition around this work, we really rely, as Mary mentioned, on community partners to you know, look at both uh, the grassroots work that's happening in the community and also systems level work and see how can we marry the two so that we are coming up with interventions and strategies that can be intentional and targeted to reduce the rate of falls. So um, we as a task force meet bi-monthly and we also have an annual event each year in, in the month of September, which is Falls Prevention Month called Only Leaves Should Fall. And that event's really great because we work with um, students at both Madison College and UW-Madison and faculty partners. And there's there are a series of screenings with that event. So participants are paired with a student, uh, you know, either a nursing student, um, OTA, PT, um, or pharmacy. And then they, they go through these series of screenings. So when they leave that event, they kind of have a better gauge on what their risk of falling might be and what might be those contributing factors so that then they can really figure out what intervention might be most effective for them to prevent a fall. So that event will be in September. Um, it will be virtual this year, so more to come on that. But then another thing, we uh, coordinate Stepping On, which is an evidence-based falls prevention program, and I think I'll talk about that more a little bit later, um, but in addition to stepping on, there are lots of other balance enhancing classes and programs throughout the county, which is where Paul and Jean and uh, Susan come into play. So we all really try to work together and look at data, which we'll also talk about um, more a little later, and figure out what it, what are the best strategies for our community to help prevent falls and keep older adults upright and independent. Yeah, it's uh, it's great work in the the falls prevention. The leaf should only fall event uh, is uh, it's something that uh, we've covered at Fact TV and have shared uh, with uh, the community. It's a, a great program. I uh, definitely encourage people to check that out uh, in September. Uh, since we don't have Miss Charlie just yet, uh, uh, Ashley, would you feel comfortable talking a little bit about uh, the Chicago uh, Steppen uh, a stepping program uh, and some of the outreach uh, that uh, Miss Daniels works with? Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, do we have 
<laughs> yeah. hey, Finally, I'm so no, no, that's all right, Miss uh, Miss Charlie. Welcome to the program. Glad to have <laughs> I'm you. Sorry, today. I'm so late. Oh no, no worries. Glad to oh, have you here. Um, before we get started, uh, could you just uh, quickly uh, introduce yourself uh, and uh, tell us what you do, and then uh, we can uh, pick up from there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so sorry. Uh, I am Miss Charlie Daniel. I am the founder of the African American Opiate Coalition. And I have the honor of working with Ashley, uh, doing uh, outreach to the African-American community on false prevention. Fantastic. Well, I'm so glad you're here uh, joining us. And uh, we were just talking about the Safe Communities and the Dane County's Falls uh, Prevention Task Force. So tell us a little bit about uh, some of the prevention and outreach uh, efforts that you're working on. One of the things that we uh, did uh, when we found out that we were not reaching the African-American community is because we had no... Uh, stepping on uh, leaders who look like them, look like us. So one of the first things that Ashley and I did was to recruit uh, African-American uh, uh, women in the community who both happened to be doctors, well, PhDs uh, in the community who became um, stepping on uh, leaders uh, for the African-American community. And one of the first groups that we recruited from was Ladies Who Lunch, and these are African-American women who are retired, and 99.9% .9 of them retired from the UW. <laughs> and so what happens is we, um, I am semi-retired, so we would meet once a month and have lunch and discuss various uh, challenges that go on in the African-American community, and also um, to talk politics, of course, we know when a bunch of women get together, we can think we, we can change the world. So we would do a lot of uh, talking about politics. But one of the things that I did was to uh, do a presentation with them and they all were excited about being involved with falls prevention. And we started a class that was uh, conducted by Dr. Joanne Pritchett, who was a retired uh, uh, nurse uh, and pharmacist from UW. And she conducted the class at uh, at Fitchburg Community Center, and from there we uh, start recruiting uh, other women, and they went to other groups because we recruited a woman, uh, Dr. Vivian Larkin, who was in, involved in a, a group where she was the only African American female uh, in that group, and I think you was her peer leader, weren't you, Susan, in her group, or was that someone else? But anyway, um, she uh, was so involved with this, with uh, stepping on that she was, she, was she and her husband, uh, uh, both uh, were members of the group and we recruited her to be a, a leader and she was really good. And she was very instrumental also in getting the women who likes to be involved. But then we thought about, uh, there are other members of the community that we needed to hit and so we did a stepping on Chicago style <laughs> dancing group at uh, a local um, uh, center in in Monona, a dance a dance uh, um, office that we were able to that uh, we were able to rent, and we had a wonderful group of women uh, and men. It was couples that was involved. They came in and learn how to dance, Chicago dance, that uh, the two leaders uh, did. We had a male leader and we had a female leader. And it was very, very popular. And uh, we hope in the future that we'll be able to continue with that. But it's my job to work with this wonderful woman by the name of Ashley to go out into the community and recruit uh, as many people that look like me uh, into the group as possible. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I watched this uh, be done before we uh, filmed the story, and yeah, you uh, did. Yeah. I I can't say that I I could probably use to take the class uh, just to uh, get my uh, appearance better myself on <laughs> uh, on the weight and everything. But uh, it, it is an, it's an awesome awesome thing, and uh, it, it's so much fun. I think that if there was something that I would tie to it. Um, you, you wouldn't even think about falling. You would think about just how much fun you're having and, and doing that. Uh, uh, so uh, great work out of uh, Safe Communities and the, the 
Falls uh, Prevention Task Force. I want to uh, spend some time in the research uh, and evaluation uh, side of things. Uh, Susan, uh, you're here uh, to talk a little bit uh, about some of those uh, pieces. Uh, what do you have to share with us? Hi, I'm going to blend a few things together. Um, in one of my roles in Safe Communities, um, which uh, Gene O'Leary has been part of over the years, we developed a way to screen community activities so that it would be easy for people to figure out, well, what activity do I do? Is it dance? Does dance help? Yes, by the way, dance helps. Um, what kind of activity works? Does yoga work? Um, how do I know? And so we came up with criterion based in research called the keys to better balance and we've developed some tools for you no matter who you are whether you're looking for an activity or if you teach or lead an activity or want to um, to make sure you have those elements those keys as part of your activity so that what you're teaching is going to help people improve their balance and I'm gonna just show you a little bit um, of a slideshow. And later on, I have a little video of Judy and Verlon who teach the Chicago Steppen that I could pull up for later if we have time. But right now, this little slideshow that I have um, actually is, um, let's see here, let me make it nice and big. Here we go. So what I want to show you, what I'm showing you here is available for anybody watching this show right now. We have free materials, including all of the graphics we're going to see here, posters, postcards, things you can use on social media if you are trying to encourage people to improve their balance or um, try to educate people about what goes into an activity. Um, to improve balance. So the biggest thing of all is you have to move in different ways at least three hours total a week, which sounds like a lot. But in stepping on, we do something called we snack on exercises. So you can do little mini bits of activity all throughout the week, like maybe standing on your left foot brushing your teeth in the morning, standing on your right foot brushing your teeth at night. That counts towards your three hours a day. I teach a class called Ballroom Basics for Balance, and you could take that class and that would get you an hour, but you could also dance down the hallway instead of walking down the hallway, and actually that counts. So just so you know, we try to teach ways um, of just changing the way you're doing what you're already doing, so it doesn't have to seem overwhelming like where am I going to find three hours. We all have it. We're just going to change the way we're doing it. So moving different ways, go sideways instead of forward, that counts. Um, another key to better balance is what, what is known as static balance or when you're still. So if you're, you're sitting down and you're, you're not getting off your seat or you're standing, let's say everybody try this who's watching with me right now. Take your arm out to the side and reach as far as you can without falling off your seat or let's say you're standing, that is an example of static balance. Or maybe lift your foot off um, of the floor, wh whether you're standing or sitting. That challenges your balance and that counts. Dynamic balance is the second thing that has to be in an activity. You have to have a mix of all of these things. And dynamic balance simply means challenging your balance while you're moving. So dancing is a great example of it because you're, you're all moving in different directions. You might be on one foot for a moment. If you're standing right now, if you stand with your feet heel to toe, that challenges your balance. But, and that's a static balance. But if you were to step heel to toe, one foot after the other, that is an example of dynamic balance or maybe walking around an object. Um, or if you were walking up the stairs or up a hill, that also counts. Dual tasking is the other thing that an activity has to have. It means not multitasking. We do not like multitasking. Multitasking is doing so many things that you don't do any of them well. Dual tasking means doing two things that are challenging enough, but not so challenging that you can't do them both. So that can be two physical things, like maybe moving your arms around while you're dancing, while you're moving your feet. Or let's say 
you are trying to, um, you're playing pickleball or maybe you're playing ping pong, which are great balance activities. You might be kind of trying to figure out, all right, what's my, what's my strategy on my next move? Something thinking and something physical at the same time. So that's dual tasking and most activities that challenge your balance have that built in. Tai Chi, for example. Um, there's always a couple things going on at once that you have to focus on, and it makes both of them much better than if you did each one by itself. And we have some examples here, so um, following a dance routine. If you look at this little graphic here, this is Verlon and Judy, who taught um, Chicago Steppen. So they were the inspiration for this image here. And so they just tend to come up over and over again all the time. Um, strength is the last big one, and especially strength in your legs, and, because if you think about it, what it takes to get up and down um, out of your chair or off the floor, if you are able to, to have strong legs, you will be able to keep your balance even if you lose it a little bit. Everybody will lose their balance at some point, whether it's I got to step around my cat or there's a crack in the sidewalk or I thought that this thing was heavier than it was and it made me lose my balance. If you are strong, your legs are going to save you much of the time. And it doesn't really take that much to get stronger in your legs. Stepping on classes and many other activities um, that include activities for your legs are very good for your balance. So we talked about three hours a week, and we talked about snacking. Um, more is definitely better, so three and more. Um, and we also um, want to point out that you have to keep challenging yourself because at some point when you do that standing on one leg brushing your teeth you're going to get really good at it so then what you have to make it a different challenge so you always have to be kind of trying to figure out how can I make it a little harder if you aren't wobbling a little bit then you're not working hard enough that's what I say so when you're wobbling that's a good sign not a bad sign um, so that's really, these are really the main keys. Um, and I'd love, you know, for you to think about different activities that might include these things. And if you need resources, we have flyers, we have um, on the Safe Communities website, you will see we have a website that's in progress right now. Um, and, but currently you can even find activities that are labeled with this B, which means we have evaluated those activities already and they have the keys. Um, there are many other activities that we haven't evaluated yet. So, um, oh, let me stop sharing here. So that's just a, the very beginning of my piece. Um, and we'd love for you to, to demand these um, items from us. We've spent a lot of time developing them. Um, we've had some wonderful help um, and they're here for you. Uh, awesome, uh, awesome information. And uh, I, I, I'm willing to try probably even with my kids uh, standing on one foot and doing the brushing at the teeth, they probably would be in the mood to actually brush their teeth more, I would think, yes. uh, throwing that out there. So I think that's great. And I'll throw the, the one thing that you said before was fun, Jeremy, and there is a little bit of, we have an understanding, I don't know if we could say evidence quite yet, but when we do activities that are fun, it changes the way that we do them and it changes the way we move and it makes it more likely that we're gonna do them. So, you know, put on some music or have, make, get your kids involved um, or your grandkids. These are the ways that are gonna be the best. I was gonna say, I think grandkids, every time we drop our kids off to the grandparents, I think they're getting their moving balance, just chasing, uh, chasing around the kids. So uh, uh, great information on that. Paul, uh, looking on your front uh, and, and some of the research on uh, yoga's effect, uh, I had no, I don't know much about yoga. I've been learning a little bit about it in recent times. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's, uh, it, there's a lot to yoga. Uh, so uh, tell us uh, what has what your research shown? Yeah, so to, uh, to piggy, piggyback off of what Susan was saying um, and what you were just saying, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of yoga out there, right? So it's also important, and that's why the balance keys is very important, is that you're finding a teacher or a program that is actually going to be looking at something like balance and gait and strength for the appropriate use of yoga in, in the environment. So just going to a yoga class isn't going to necessarily increase your 
um, or decrease your risk of falls. So, so that that's really important, and that's why the balance keys come into play because they're doing the work for everyone with the balance keys of having that out there and saying, well, this program does is appropriate and it's 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 hitting all the marks that need to be hit. Um, with our program, what we've done is we've looked at. Uh, four, we have four research studies currently, and one of them being with the deaf and hard of hearing community. And what we've found in all of them is we're decreasing the risk of falls. And so when we talk about falls and specifically what we're looking at with yoga, we're looking at balance, strength, and gait or the, the way people walk. And um, while we're showing all of those things, there's other things that we're finding that are important to point out which is the community aspect, right? We're finding that when people are engaged and they want to come to a class, even a virtual class, that it's bringing people together and it's making them want to be there. Maybe it's that element of fun that Susan was talking about, but it's also getting to be with your friends and that's encouraging them to get out and do physical activity. So there's that element to it, but then it's also showing we're showing with our research that it's increasing the activities of daily living. So not only are they coming to the class, but then they're also feeling more energized or more empowered to go and um, maybe do gardening or go for longer walks or, or play with the grandkids. So it's, it's showing all of those different aspects. We did just to kind of, um, show for one of our research studies, we did show that it decreased falls, yoga decreased falls by 48%. But now we're talking evidence informed, we're not talking evidence based. And so it's important to talk about that, that this is not, we can't say that yoga is going to reduce falls by 48%. But our studies have shown that and that's where we're moving forward. We're moving forward to do more research studies to say, ideally, that yoga will reduce um, the fall rates. And the only other thing I would say is, is that when we're looking at research specifically, there is a difference between uh, research that is on balance, let's say. Yoga has been shown to uh, definitely improve balance, but you can be somebody who is very uh, good at balancing, but they still might have a high risk of falling. So just that languaging of what we're looking at when we're looking at research that we're really looking at those numbers that Mary pointed out earlier that we can start to decrease some of those uh, uh, huge numbers related to fall risks. So, so just adding on to that, that it's about activities and we're just looking at one of them, you know, as Mary, uh, Susan said, you know, Tai Chi is another great one, dance, all of those are, are important to bring into play, so. Yeah. So I'd it sounds like you just got to keep moving. And uh, the Stepping On program, Ashley, uh, a program you kind of talked a little bit about, um, but what's the effectiveness of that program? Uh, why does it work? Why, why should people get involved? Yeah, uh, great question. Well, so Stepping On was developed by Dr. Lindy Clemson um, in Australia. And then our own uh, Dr. Jane Mahoney, who's here at, at UW-Madison, adapted the program for the U.S. audience. Um, so we're really fortunate to have her as a resource here. Um, and so there was a study done in 2017, or a study published in 2017, and it showed that for Wisconsin residents who completed stepping on, there was a 50% reduction in the rate of falls. And there was also a 70% reduction in emergency department visits for those completers. Nationally, there's a 31% reduction rate among completers of the program for falls, um, but Wisconsin has a, a bit of a higher rate. So it is an evidence-based program. So it is recognized as that nationally, that it has been proven to reduce falls. Um, so that's the, the long story short of it. So our goal now with stepping on is to really increase access to that program for everybody in Dane County. So we looked at some data probably four or five years ago now, and we looked at really where are we offering stepping on, and it was mostly clinics, hospitals, you know, kind of right along the isthmus. And so our goal the past five or six years has been to really broaden the reach of stepping on to areas 
uh, where people may not have access to programs like that. Um, and because falls are happening everywhere, not just along the isthmus. So that's been something that uh, Miss Charlie and I have been working on in collaboration with all the great people on the call today. Uh, indeed, and that uh, does lead us to our next topic. And uh, Jean, uh, we're calling on you. We have the data. We've got the research. We've got the we've got the organizations. Uh, but now we got to do the action. And um, I mean, as Ashley mentioned, we got to get it to everybody. Uh, so uh, MSR uh, MSCR uh, uh, been a big help in, in in bringing this to to everyone. Right. Thank you. I think. Um... The benefit of our programs is that I think oftentimes they're entry points into a lot of these other endeavors. It's a recreational fitness program. It's it's community based. It happens in a lot of different spaces. And I think when someone starts an exercise program at age 70 and they've never exercised before, it's a big leap of faith to think that you're actually going to get better at something as you get older. So what they find is that I can do this. Paul sort of alluded to this, as did Susan. I can do some of these things. And then they talk to their friends. It's a very big a uh, social thing. We sometimes have people saying, I can't exercise, but I really miss my buddies. Can I still come to class? Um, that part's really, really important. And I think navigating the world takes all those little pieces sometimes. So we have yoga classes available to the community. We have stepping on Susan's brought in ballroom basics for balance. Um, Paul has done staff training for my yoga staff. We have a lot of Tai Chi classes, which are very, very popular indoor and outdoor. The outdoor Tai Chi classes for the summer are already full. That's been a very popular offering. So I think, again, that they're a really good entry point into some other more specific things that address maybe bone health, um, other chronic disease states. And what we find is that when we advertise things like the stepping on class, exercise is actually just one part of that. The other things that people learn from that are really, really valuable. So um, I consider our partnerships with all of these folks and other parts of the UW um, really valuable in spreading that across the community, like Ashley said. Uh, absolutely. Uh, one thing that comes to mind here, uh, and this might be um, from being on an EMS service for many years, but um, uh, people who are uh, are afraid because that this has been their balance has been taken away because of a medical um, something's medically happened. Something is is now that barrier in place. Uh, maybe Susan can talk a little bit about this too. But um, just trying to to put that barrier to the side and still have people get involved. Um, uh, what do you say to those folks who you just you got to nudge them? You know they need to do it, um, and it just seems like it's it's a big burden. Yeah, so it's really about finding what's motivating to that person. So you have to take a little time with each person and find out what what motivates them and what their barriers are. That is part of why um, Stepping On works because that's part of the curriculum is discovering the barriers. Maybe it's time, maybe it's motivation, maybe it's fear um, or something else altogether. And you have to speak to that specific barrier and then, you know, brainstorm with that person um, ways that they think they can overcome it. Or what I love is what Jean had alluded to, which is the social component and why stepping on work so well, I'm convinced, is because we help each other come up with ideas. So it's not all on you to figure it out and to fix it for yourself. Um, and, and trusting a professional like a physical therapist, like a yoga instructor, um, any community leader who's been working in this field for a while, um, and Jean is one of the top most experts in the country, so make sure you talk to her a lot, but, you know, coming up with creative ways to, you know, yes, you can um, stand up and sit down from your chair three times before you turn on the television and that counts, you know, so it doesn't have to be complicated and reminding people that it doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. I think that's so important. Uh, a part of this is um, it, 
is breaking down those barriers uh, and getting together. Um, COVID-19 definitely throws probably a wrench in or has, what am I saying? It's thrown a wrench in a lot of things, right? Um, uh, so have we seen, and I, I would believe, uh, and I'm hoping that I'm correct here, but are we seeing more people, um, getting involved in the virtual classes? Does, is that a barrier now, another barrier that's been removed or something that has maybe stopped people from getting involved? Maybe Gene, uh, start with you, uh, uh, on that. Are we seeing, uh, new people get involved? Yes, I think so. I, I can speak to the, the certainly the pros and cons of virtual because I think everybody here had to, to deal with that with uh, in some fashion. But I will also say that Madison does have a digital divide. So as accessible as, you know, virtual classes are for a lot of people because of COVID, there's a lot of people that do not have good internet access or might not own a computer or they access those things at a community center or a senior center, which have not been available for the past year. So uh, it's it's both sides to that coin, but it really did help people. We had we had Zoom chat sessions to learn how to how to get on camera and how to how to do all these things. We we sent out paper forms for fitness classes for some people and paper forms for how to access Zoom. And I think um, it was fabulous. It's really helped a lot of people access classes. Um, it's made them more convenient for some people, but then there are still a lot of people that need that in-person face-to-face -face class. And we saw a huge number of people opt into the virtual and they will always be around those virtual classes, but we're seeing a gradual, Hey, here I am. I'm ready to go. Where's my buddies? Um, which I it's, I'm very happy that that's happening. So um, there are good things and bad things about virtual as an instructor and a participant, but I think it's opened another little door for some people to continue their participation. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, and we need each other. That's why we want to get together. We need that interaction. We need uh, that, that be social uh, and get involved. So the big question, how right now, where can I go? Where can I find those classes and get involved? Who wants to take this one? Let's, let's do this. Oh, no, I've, I've, they're all outspoken. Or, uh, all right, Paul, how do I get involved? Tell me where I can find something right now. I want to, I want to get involved now. Oh, well, Jean just uh, unmuted herself. I think that's the best resource if we're looking at Dane County, um, or one of the best resources. But then, you know, our other facilities, uh, UW Health and SSM, all the other facilities that are out there, um, ac ac accessing them through their portals and their virtual portals. So, yes. Jean? <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Paul. I would add to that we're really, really lucky in Madison and Dane County to have all these resources. It's almost confusing. So I think the more we can have discussions like this, um, the better off we'll be, you know, for everybody. And I think everybody's pretty good about saying, hey, you should call so and so. That would be perfect for you. That's just where people are and where they should be, quite honestly. Um, MSCR has a really long history. We, we've That's all I've ever done here is older adult fitness, but we work in the community. I've worked with all of these people and many, many more uh, to pull off some of these things. So um, you can find virtual and in-person classes at a lot of community centers and senior centers. Absolutely. Uh, it they are out there and they're ready for you. And a lot of them opening back up now. So I definitely want to check into that and sign up early because everybody wants to get involved in something right now. We want that so bad. Um, as we start to uh, look at closing out here, uh, next area to look at uh, is the interface between EMS, healthcare and community-based programs. Uh, Mary, uh, if you want to kick us off here on uh, what's this, uh, what are these programs shaping up uh, out there? Whoops, I think you got on mute there, Mary. We want to hear you. Um, we, this we, and other parts of the we have been really looking at how to make a cohesive response, uh, how to establish a cohesive response. And by that, I mean um, 
starting with EMS, who is the, as you know, the often responder um, through emergency departments, through geriatric and gerontology um, and specialty clinics and primary care screening. And, and how can we make this cohesive along with referrals to these community programs and to specialty healthcare clinics that people need so that everybody knows what to do and how to do it because there is, that piece is not clear, I would say, and isn't cohesive at this point. So I'm gonna pass this to Ashley to talk about the EMS side um, in a second, but I'll, I'll also just refer to one of my colleagues at UW Health is an emergency room doc who's doing research on trying to identify um, whether it's possible to assess an adult coming into the emergency room, not for a fall injury, but for some other reason, to assess whether they are a risk for a future fall and therefore a future visit to the emergency department. So that we really take every opportunity when we pass someone who's an older adult and um, find ways to really pre to reduce risk at every juncture that we can and really looking at, you know, every time we're facing a patient and a community member. So now I'm gonna pass this to Ashley and she can talk about the EMS piece. Thanks, Mary. Um, so one of the things Ms. Charlie and I and the rest of the Dane County Falls Task Force has done probably, I think it's been three years now, is we have a really great relationship and partnership with public health and EMS in Dane County. So we've been able to get almost real-time data um, that shows us calls to EMS for a fall. So we're able to see, thanks to public health and EMS here in our community, where falls are uh, happening and, um, and what they look like. What, what's the cause of the fall, some demographic data. And that's been really instrumental for us as we're, you know, we, we deliver programs to the community. So, you know, it's not as effective if you just offer a random program, not a random program, but a program in a certain place and then expect people to come. But if you can really be intentional about, look, this community has a really high rate of falls. They're calling EMS every you know week this many times. Why don't we see if we could offer stepping on or Tai Chi or Barn Basics for Balance or some sort of intervention that would uh, appeal to people in that area and then see what happens, you know, build those relationships. So it's been really great to have uh, the partnership that we have so that we can better target our interventions in the community where we see falls happening. Um, and according to Fitch Rona EMS, falls has been for the majority of the year, the number one uh, call that they've received. So they there's a lot of call volume for falls, and um, and I would I would venture to say that's not just the Fitzrona service area, but probably across the board. So by partnering with EMS, it makes sense because they're the ones responding. If we can reduce that load, so that they might be able to respond to other things, you know, if we work together more collaboratively, then we maybe could really have an impact. Uh, absolutely. Um, do you? Uh, uh, Maybe, and I don't know if this question has been answered today, but Ashley or Mary, um, fall, how, why do falls happen? I mean, we, we've kind of, we've crisscrossed a lot of areas today and, and what we should do to make it uh, improve. And I like to hear the research that's being done at UW on looking past just the, the laid person because falls can, can happen for so many various reasons. So uh, what is that common reason for falls in Dane County? Well, I think we sort of did touch on it in different ways. I mean, um, as we age, our body changes and um, our balance, I don't want to say deteriorates because it's not quite the, the right word, but um, if we don't retain our strength and balance, we are weaker and more at risk for falling. So that's one thing. But the places people fall largely are in their homes or around their homes, and it's pets, clutter, rugs, um, 
bathrooms are a very dangerous place for people to fall. That's where the worst injuries occur. So there, but there are programs for that, <laughs> as we would like to say. And there are, you know, people who will come and do home visits and take a look at how to improve the safety in someone's home. But pets and shoes, you know, laying around in a pile or rugs that are throw rugs. And um, and I'm going to, again, pass it back to my colleagues. But those are those are the common or, you know, outside it's, you know, sidewalks, not watching where we're walking. And Susan is waiting anxiously to take the mic. I don't want to forget to mention medications. Uh, medication management uh, and side effects are a bit, one other big factor. And everything Mary mentioned, as well as that, um, that's what stepping on is. It's a multifactorial approach to like all the ways that people fall. And everybody is individual. I fall because I rush. Somebody else might fall because they're weak. Somebody else might fall because their vision is changing. It's important to know um, and to meet people where they are, to speak to everybody else's point. We have to recruit people, not only to participate in different parts of our neighborhood, but we have to recruit people to help lead from different parts of our community. So everybody listening here, if you're ready to join in, I say, we all need you to help us uh, do what we're doing. So we look forward to it. Can I say, get in on this too? Yes. Uh, uh, one Charlie. thing that... Yeah, one thing that we haven't talked about is environment. We live in Wisconsin where it snows and ice. I fell five years ago and I fell on a sidewalk and this because of snow and ice on the sidewalk. I then had to have surgery three years ago on my back from my fall. One thing too that I wanna to touch on too when we're talking about virtual, uh, the group that I work with, Ladies Who Lunch, probably will not do virtual because uh, majority of them live alone and they like that camaraderie of being with a group. So virtual is not gonna work for, for the, the population that I work with. So that's gonna be a problem too. And I'll be glad when we get over this COVID so we can meet, start meeting. And um, I, one thing too, that we are talking about falls prevention. And one thing that I keep bringing up that I want us to look at, and I talk, I've said this in our meetings, after the fall, people like me, what happens to people like me after I've had this fall, after I've had this surgery, what type of stepping on class would you have for a person like me who's had a fall already? Another thing too, before we close, I wanna thank you, Mary. Mary has been an ally an advocate for us ever since she returned to, to Madison. Uh, and so I just wanna thank you, Mary, for always being an ally to, to us. And uh, Susan, you're the best PT I know. <laughs> thank you so much for being there for us also. I think we should give kudos to those who, uh, who deserve the kudos. Tom, I'm sorry, Paul, I don't know you, but I'm sure you're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I think this whole group here, uh, yeah, first off, you know, round of applause to, to all of you um, for, for what you're doing. I, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big, big, big piece, and there's so many pieces to it. And, you know, all we can do is, like, uh, like has been mentioned today, is we've got to keep doing this. We've got to keep getting out there. We've got to keep having the discussions uh, to break down the barriers and find the barriers, right? We've got to find those barriers and, and keep working through them. And you folks... I uh, have done a tremendous job and there's still work to be had and that's okay. We'll, we'll take it one step at a time for sure. Um, but we're getting down to the questions and I actually have some questions coming in uh, as well. Uh, so I want to make sure we do have uh, time for that. So uh, if we could here, I'm going to uh, read this first question to you uh, and uh, we can take it by uh by each, each person. Uh, so first one here, it says, I think uh, a large barrier for individuals interested in classes, uh, i.e. in person, is transportation to locations and the cost of programs. Are there grants or ways we can get around these barriers? Who would like to take this one? Uh, Ashley. Um, so one of the things we've been able to offer, we safe communities uh, with the stepping on program specifically, is that if transportation is a barrier to somebody, um, talk with me about it. Talk with if you uh, 
you uh, know the leader of the Stepping On Workshop because we have been able to provide uh, taxi vouchers for individuals who find that transportation is a barrier because we don't, I mean, as a goal, we want this program to be accessible to everybody in our community, which transportation is a huge barrier. So um, I would say contact me if that is still an issue and I can at least help with stepping on specifically. And I think Susan might have something else to add. Um, I know I work with Madison Senior Center as well as Newbridge, which is another organization in our area that um, coordinates and provides different classes around the area as well as MSCR. I know that Newbridge and Madison Senior Center offer a scholarship for a class for people. So approaching them about their classes and say, hey, can I, can I apply? for this. And I know um, the Goodman Center also offers low cost classes as um, ballroom basics for balance is working on scholarships for people who want to take the class as well. So ask for sure. Ask first, always just ask. The, the other thing I'll add is that we are constantly in conversation about where, right, about where can we expand to so that we you know, it would take a lot to have something accessible to ev within everyone's, you know, immediate radius. But we're we're having serious conversations about that, including, you know, the possibility of um, healthcare settings where most people go at least sometimes. So, all right. Uh, next one would be just in general, where where should somebody start uh, if they're concerned about somebody who's falling? Maybe they're concerned about their parent uh, falling and finding that research, uh, resource. The, the doctors maybe said something, but that's not enough. Like where, where could be another contact person? Where could that start be uh, to, for, for that person um, uh, to, to find you guys, to find these programs to, 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 to get out there and and get started. We can't stump the panel here, no way. I would say, I'll just throw one thing out, everyone else build on this, but the Aging and Disability Resource Center in um, Dane County is really great, kind of a, a one-stop shop for all things um, that might be helpful for older adults or those who might have some sort of disability. So that's always a great, just a kind of catch all place to start. And then um, I, I don't know, Jeremy, if you mentioned talking with the physician or even your pharmacist, if, if there are some concerns, then uh, you know, they might be able to refer out to some sort, you know, whether it's PT or um, a community program. Susan. Here in Dane County, um, UW-Madison has a falls clinic and it is, free and it is, um, it's not just for people who use UW Health, it's for anybody and you don't need a referral. So that information I know is at Safe Communities website as well as the ADRC has that information and it's a thorough evaluation of a person and why they might be falling. Excuse me. All right. Well, uh, unfortunately, our time is uh, coming up here to, to an end and uh, a, a TV guy, I got to stick to the time here. Uh, I'm hoping that this is the first of many conversations. I would love to have all of you back uh, or get together again, uh, you know, Mary, for uh, thank you for setting this all up. Um, just really quick as we wrap up here from each of you, um, just uh, quick final thoughts um, uh, before we close out here. Uh, and, and thank you all so very much. Mary, if you want to start us off. Uh, thank, first of all, thank you, Jeremy. It was, you know, great to call you and have you be excited about this possibility. But you know, there's a, there is a lot of work happening. I think that's, and by people who are both passionate and very knowledgeable, as you can tell, and this is sort of, you know, a, a third or a fourth or a quarter of, I mean, a, a small number of all the people who've been really working on this. Um, so we will be back in some form. I think it'd be great for Susan and Paul and Jean to maybe do some demonstrations at some point, um, which I know they'd be happy to do. So thank you. Uh, as long as it's not me, I think Paul would break me. So, <laughs> I, the Chicago day, uh, the step in class, ooh, that's uh, that's good stuff there. Uh, but, uh, Susan, uh, uh, wrapping up. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, please 
share my information. I'd love to be a resource. Anybody can call me or email me. Um, there are resources all over the country. Fantastic. Jean, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out and sharing your insight. Final thoughts from you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I guess I would say don't forget the possible. It, it, things don't have to be perfect. They just need to be possible and open to people. So, and I agree with Susan. Um, put the resources out there. This is great. Awesome. Ashley, uh, your final thoughts. Um, well, thank you all, first of all, for making this happen. And thank you to all the people on this panel, because the work that we're doing wouldn't happen without you guys. So um, thank you. And then I would say to just piggyback, just take that first step, you know, whether it's talking with your pharmacist or requesting a free home safety assessment or um, or signing up for a class, just take the first step and just try to do something that would help keep you independent and living the life that you want to live. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, awesome uh, words there. Uh, Miss Charlie, uh, if, uh, if you can hear me still, uh, your final thoughts. Yes. Thank you for having me here today. I just want to say this is a great group that you have today. And if you need any information, especially uh, the communities of color, please feel free to call me at Safe Communities. Um, my email is cdaniel at safercommunity.net. Thanks. Perfect. Nope. Thank you for joining us. And Paul, uh, your final thoughts and appreciate your time today. Oh, thank you so much. So yes, I just... I would echo everything that everybody said. Um, I, I appreciate all the work that everybody's been doing. And I guess my final call would be to those that think they want to start a program to not feel limited by um, anything that, that, that would, would make them feel like they couldn't come to a class because any of the classes that are being put out there, especially by safe communities and um, the, the other programs we talked about, we want people to come with what they have. So meeting people where they're at. So um, if you use a cane or a walker or any of those things that you might feel might limit you, that's not something that you have to feel like is going to not let you do a program. So everyone's invited. So please, please, please reach out. Absolutely. Great, uh, uh, great words and get inspired and get uh, keep on moving. Um, all right. Well, that does it. Thank you all so much again. Uh, Mary, thank you for the invite to host today. Uh, it was an honor. Uh, we'll be replaying these on FACT TV and, uh, and make sure we get them out to all of uh, everybody uh, who participated today as well uh, that you have a chance to uh, review it. Thank you so very much and have a great day.